Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the PSP Projects Limited Q1 FI23 Results Conference Call hosted by Dalit Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shravan Shah, VP Research Analyst. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Shah. Uh, thank you, Seema. Uh, good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all for Q1 FI23 results conference call of PSP Projects Limited. We thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host the call. From management, we have Mr. P.S. Patel, Chairman, Managing Director and CEO, along with Mrs. Hethal Patel, CFO of PSP Projects with us. Without wasting much time, I would now hand over the floor to management for their opening remarks, uh, remarks and then we can have a Q&A session. Over to you. Thank you, Shavan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our earnings call. Please note that a copy of our disclosures is available on the investor section of our website, as well as the stock exchange. Please do note that anything said on this call, which reflects our outlook towards the future, or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement, must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company is facing. With that, I would like to hand over the floor to our MD, Mr. Prahlad Bhai Patel, for his opening statement. Thank you. Thank you, everyone and moderators. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to each one of you, and thank you for joining us on quarter one of the 23 annual call. I trust everyone is doing well. I believe you have already got a chance to go through the investor's presentation uploaded on the stock exchange. I will begin with the key highlights that took place during the quarter. PSP projects reported an overall strong performance in an otherwise seasonally weak quarter. We are <coughs> happy to announce that PSP projects have once again recorded highest ever order book till date of 46.13 crore. In comparison to all previous first quarters, the company has received highest ever order inflow of Rs. 550 crore in quarter 1 FR23 as compared to 4.89 crore during quarter 1, uh, 4.89 crore during quarter 1 after 22, with majority being private orders. The major projects awarded during the quarters are Island Half Foundation was the proposed tallest center of the world, one of the first tallest residential tower of Amdavad, construction of institutional campus in Amdavad for a leading Mumbai based management institute. We are happy to inform you that the company till date has already received an order in of nearly 1,100 crore of each, 70% are institutional order. Each year, the order in flow has been the base as compared to the past five years of the year. During the quarter, we completed three projects which include the largest city in Mall of Gujarat. All the projects were completed in time. Total projects completed till date uh, to totals 286 projects. As on 30th June 2022, the government projects comprised 63% out of the, all the business verticals. As on the we have 46 ongoing projects of which 43% are based in Bidra, 41% in UP, 16% in Maharashtra, and 0.3% in Rajasthan. In our portfolio, APC and country projects constitute to about 83% and civil projects constitute to about 16%. APC projects include planning, design, construction, and post construction activity that has opened up horizons of growth for our companies which last few years. Big pipeline. Going forward, we have a big pipeline of approximately 4,000 crores of which 41% is from private and then 51% is from state of Gujarat. About Surat Diamond Boots, I think I should not focus too much on Surat Diamond Boots as the project is already completed and except the most of the areas have already been handed over to the uh, owners. Only some portion of the basement and the final thing, final uh, conclusion of accounts is going on. And update on UP projects, yes, this time we have faced a big problem in terms of labor <clears throat> because March 20 and March 21 was the biggest hit of Corona and during that period, none of the labor in UP, BR, Bengal and Orissa and Chattis were able to, uh, 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 were able to manage marriages. So this time the marriage has been the big peak, um, they were the peak season, so we were having a very 
big problem in terms of having the labor in April and May. And that's the reason that this quarter we could not um, deliver to an extent of 20-25% growth compared to past quarter, past quarter 21. And upgrade on sports complex, it is a 563 crore government project. The facility is being built with the objective to qualify for Olympics in India. The project has already begun and is going on in full force. Upgrade on DMD, we have two slow moving sub projects that is DMD and Bandhu, which together contribute to 16% of our spending on the book. Rest of all projects are fully mobilized. An update on Thunder Food. To summarize, we remain optimistic and positive for growth of infrastructure segment due to government's conscious effort to uh, uh, accelerate economic growth through higher infrastructure spend and providing incentives to domestic manufacturing. We see private sectors could also fuel to India's growth story. The softening the commodity prices augurs well for infrastructure companies with steel prices having declined by 20% from its high mark, the highs of March 2020. With this, I conclude my remarks, and now I would like to hand over the call to Ms. Sethal Patel to take on to the financials. <coughs> Thank you, sir. The financial performance during the quarter ended 30th June 2022 is as below. Quarter 1 FY23 versus quarter 1 FY22. The revenue from operations for the quarter is at rupees 345 crores versus rupees 317 crores, higher by 8.8% on YOY basis. EBITDA for quarter is at rupees 47 crores versus rupees 39 crores, higher by 19.6% on YOY basis. EBITDA margin is at 13.64% versus 12.42%. Net profit for the quarter is at rupees 28.51 crores versus rupees 25.11 crores, which is higher by 13.5% on YOY basis. Tax margin is at 8.13% versus 7.8%. During the quarter, the revenue generated from all eight UP projects put together was 34 crores during quarter 1 FI23. Cumulative revenue till uh, 30th June 22 is rupees 182 crores. The revenue generated from Surat Diamond Group project was 53 crores during the quarter 1 FI23. Cumulative revenue till 30th June 2022 is rupees 1856 crores. Total revenue from Sikas facility was rupees 14 crore during the quarter. Increase in other income is mainly attributable to increase in interest on fixed deposits from 2.54 crores in quarter 1 FY22 to 3.17 crore, mainly due to increase in fixed deposits from 220 crore as on 30th June 21 to 317 crore as on 30th June 22. Increase in interest received on mobilization advance, which is received from contract, uh, contractors of UP projects from 3 lakhs in quarter 1 FY22 to 1.35 crore in quarter 1 FY23. Profit on sale of old plant and machinery 46 lakhs, which was not there in quarter 1 FY22 other income. Employee expense has increased by 43.5% on YY basis, which is mainly due to annual appraisals and increment during the April 22 and increase in managerial remuneration. There is no significant change in revenue for the year on consolidated basis. Would like to mention few of the important balance sheet numbers as on 30th June 2022. Long term borrowing has increased from 34 crores to 50 crores as on 30th June 22. The increase is due to long-term loan of 20, 20 CR availed from bank at 7% for sports complex instead of availing mobilization advance from client at 10% interest. There is no significant increase in uh, working capital debt short-term borrowing. On March 22, it was 66 crores and June 22, it is 67 crores. FY21 was 68 crores, so it will remain between 60 to 75 crores though we have total fund based facility of 140 crores. Gross block of asset is 347 crores and net block of asset is 207 crores and addition during the quarter is 3 crores. 
among these from customers that is unbilled revenue is 128 crores which mainly comprises of kashi and some other major projects among due to customers advanced billing that is 24 crores retention non current 79 Uh, retention current 37 crores long term borrowing 50 crores short term borrowing 67 crores mobilization advance 140 crores working capital days are as follows data days are 70 credited days are 54 inventory days are 19 total net working capital days are 35 Out of total credit facility of 1,047 crores, utilized limit is 579 crores, of which rupees 53 crore are fund-based utilization, and rupees 526 crore is non-fund-based utilization. As on 30 June 22, the company has total fixed deposit of 317 crores, out of which three deposits of rupees 140 crores. FD bonds rupees 172 crores are under lien with the bank for credit facilities, and FD is given to the client as security deposit amount to 5 crores. Work on hand on 30 June 22 is 4,613 crores, and the bifurcation in project numbers are shown in uploaded presentation. That concludes the update on financials, and we are now open for the question and answer session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. We take the first question from the line of Mr. Sanjay from Envision Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Mr. Sanjay, your line is in talk mode, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I am just uh, going ahead. Uh, the government projects are uh, contributing approximately sixty-three percent, and this was your voice. Your voice is very low. Okay, okay. I will try to improve, sir. Uh, yeah, these government uh, projects. Uh, uh, what is the timeline of uh, receiving uh, the amount from the government projects? As you said, that 63% of this order book is coming from government projects. So, can you some uh, okay. highlight something on this? What is the which timeline you are asking for? Sir, the payment timeline. I mean, uh, the amount which is received from government uh, on these projects, as the order book is majorly from government, right? It is on monthly basis and monthly billing, and usually by next month bill cycle it will be paid. Okay, it is on monthly basis. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and any uh, major uh, capex plans? I mean, now we looking forward for this FY twenty three. Yeah, that now it depends on the project which we receive, and uh, once the projects are received, then we decide upon the cost. Yes, but usually when I, I always tell it, it uh, that past uh, experience, it ranges between three to four percent of the sales that we always average the capex in uh, which we do in every year. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that is all from my end. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Barani Vijay Kumar from Spark Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, we were uh, in the process of uh, bidding for this executive conclave as uh, part of the Central Vista. So, uh, what is the status of that uh, bid, sir? The Central Vista, the last project which was announced was the executive uh, conclave, and that at that time we did not we did not participate. But uh, uh, 
And then after no further any inquiry has came up, that yeah, if there is an answer, your substantial value will be given for that. Okay, okay. How much uh, is uh, the potential uh, upcoming uh, bid from the Central Vista in your view? I think uh, after March only one tender has been completed, that is that is uh, executive entry which was about 1,200 crore. So probably if we completed the previous earlier 20,000 crore, we must have reached 6,500 crore. So I think 12, 13,000 crore that is yet to come. Okay, and this will come uh, say in the next uh, one year? It should because the, the government has already uh, planned to complete this whole uh, campus by 2026. So it should come back to the so how it is going on. Okay, okay. And uh, there were also a few other uh, opportunities like uh, sports complex in Ahmedabad, uh, residential projects in Mumbai, etc. So can you highlight uh, the big pipeline more in granular detail? Where uh, are these uh, big pipeline uh, projects that you see upcoming? So there are few projects which we are targeting and which are very keen to build and which we are all positive on. Uh, for the conversion to the project side as uh, Janet Valley Park, which is in Mumbai. Second one is Municipal Corporation Building, which is in Gujarat at Surat. And uh, a few projects from uh, uh, Adani, we are also working with them and we are expecting some others to come from them. Their side also, uh, on airports and uh, their corporate uh, buildings also. Uh, one more project of DLA Residential, which we have just started uh, thinking about and building, is 1,000 crore in Delhi. So the potential for building is not a big problem as far as companies like us are concerned. It is only about the prices of which they can work in the competition it is. So as we have already reached to the model with the 1,000 crore plus three this the first quarter, I think we'll be going a little bit uh, slowly and uh, safely. And let us hope we, as we have so as having it quarter one in our uh, this year, whole year 2023 in flow, at about 2,200 crore, I think almost 40% we have reached. So let us hope for the better projects to come in Gujarat and better opportunities in Gujarat. At the same time, some opportunities in Delhi and um, okay. So you're telling the uh, order inflow for the full year expected is about 2,200 crores? 2,200 crore plus is the reason what we expected minimum that we have to include issue that so that keeping our outstanding order because we have to include 4,000 crore. Okay, okay. And uh, how is the uh, competitive intensity uh, for uh, for bidding in these projects? See, I think as I always say, when the size of the project are 100, 600, 700 crore, the competition is always between 4 or 5 large companies which you all know. And now when the project sizes are more than 1,000 crore, the same competition remains. So except when we as a company building for projects of 250 crore in corporate, the competition is a uh, little bit less. And uh, when we build for projects in government beyond 500 crore, again the competition is very niche, even with the large companies only. Okay. And then how does your um, uh, ability to pass on cost escalations uh, in the overall order book of 4,600 crores, so how, how much percentage would have full uh, cost pass-through mechanism? I think, uh, I think as, as we are saying, at about 61% uh, of order is from outside Vidra. So I think that if you can uh, even that 15% project said Maharashtra, so it is about 45% project which we are doing in UP, where the path through is not there, it's on a fixed price. The rest of the all the projects are passed. <clears throat> okay. Okay, sir. So that's it from my side. All the best for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Ravi Naredi from Naredi Invest. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Pratap Bhai. You are doing excellent well and in systematic yes. way. Sir, my point is, yes. what what about Maharashtra project? Those are uh, stand still. Do you get any revival soon? Vivendi and Pandarpur? 
Gander Pool, we have not heard too much about them, but the since uh, the matter is in board and the matter is today, we have heard on a hearing, but it is still in the again, to 17th of August. But yes, government has initiated to revive that project, but with some difference in value that it may go beyond 1,000 crores. Uh, but we are still positive. Let us search for some better because the betterment as the government has changed in uh, Maharashtra, both the projects should get uh, revived to uh, some extent. <clears throat> okay, okay. That, that, that is a good thing. And what will be long-term margin trajectory in next two to three years? As you had given an investor uh, presentation around 8 to 9% in last five years. Yeah. See, again, that is the question which I want to always ask and I have always tried to maintain that should be within the range of 7 to 8 percent. And when it comes to the digital, it should be between 11 to 13 percent. That depends on quarter to quarter and the type of project which we are doing and what, what level project is going on in which quarter. So we will still type and uh, make sure that it remains in that range. Okay. And uh, what uh, margin we get in the precast? Precast is again based on the same calculation as it's um, um, more of the same construction part only. It will only think somebody actually in the wind instead of the child. So whatever gross profit which we calculate in tender at first plus 20 to first plus 30, depending on type of the project and the lead of the project. So that should remain in the same uh, uh, criteria as the, we do in construction. So margin will be around how much? I, as I said, it should be around 11 to 12 percent of the detail. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All the best, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Pankaj Singh from Trust Bank Securities Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Mm -hmm. so, first of all, thank you for providing me this opportunity. Sir, congratulations on the research number that you posted. So my first question is that, sir, that sir, sir, most of our projects are in Gujarat, in Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra. After, so mm -hmm. do we have any plans to cover other areas or other regions? See, as I always say, our first target is always Gujarat, and once we explore any state, if we have to get other opportunities in that state, we start to maintain the, uh, that state as our area. So as I, as I said, previously we were given Gujarat, then we got an opportunity to work with Kashi Vishwanath in UP, and then the later on the team is few tenders. As we were comfortable in UP, we have explored uh, to the whole of the UP. So it is not about uh, going in any state. It is more about how much we are comfortable, what value project we are sitting and what type of project it is, and what level of competition it is. So we would like to explore new states only and only when that we meet to other criteria of uh, how the competition is, what type of project it is. <clears throat> okay. Okay, sir. So the next question, sir. In the last phone call that you mentioned about some government residential project in Delhi, which is worth 100 crores. Are we still bidding for it or uh, we have got this order? So what's the status? The government residential project of 100 crore in Delhi? 1,000. 1,000. The project which we are saying, uh, that was in the last one which we are saying, that, that order had gone. We did yes, that project, but I think we will have not lost. And then mm -hmm. presently, which we have, I told about the uh, private residential project of DLF, uh, DLF, which is also in the current Yes. Okay, sir. Oh, sir, uh, the order addition this quarter, and please provide the update for the few large projects in quarter one, sir. Pardon me? The order addition, order addition this quarter. Order addition that we have already uh, said that it is about 1,000 crore in total at the starter. And out of this, I would say which I already mentioned in my initial uh, remarks about staff question at the, one of the temporary residential towers of Ahmedabad and then is doing and living in Mumbai Institute. Thank you, sir. 
So answer next question is that can we expect that we will be debt free in the next one to two years? That is something which I can't promise you, but yes, possibly we are not too much as on as your debt. Only that is that we are forty crores a long term debt, and that we are doing that is something which I don't feel is too much as far as your balance sheet is concerned. Okay. And sir, the last for last question is sir. So as we have seen, so the metal prices have also gotten, cement prices also softened. So uh, do we have some sort of benefit of these kind of commodity prices downward decline on the on the operating cost? Or yeah, see, it is not a benefit on the existing project. We said we survive from losses. So I think that is the benefit basing in this guy that some of the projects are on fixed prices, which we quoted in March 2021. So that's the benefit which that we uh, uh, may go for a lesser loss or may go for a loss that is not eaten by that state wise. Otherwise, in most of the new new projects are only built by the parties on the same the current prices, so that should not be. Okay, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on a touchstone telephone. We take the next question from the line of Pawan Deep Bhatia from Phoenix Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yeah. Sir, uh, con- uh, thank you for the opportunity. You were talking to the last uh, participant, and you said we aspire to maintain 10-11 percent margin. Is it for the pre-cast, oh. right? You are telling. Yes. Pre-cast structure. Yeah. So our margin. The question was the question. Question was asked specifically for pre-cast. The reason the margin should will be the same as we what we expect in building construction. The pre-cast margin will be same. That was the question. So I answered that yes, it will be the same range. Okay, so so just to get it right, our our margin in pre-cash so that uh, the the capex that we've done recently is going to be in the range of eleven to twelve percent. Yeah. And sir, one one last question. Uh, uh, you have uh, earlier you used to give uh, residential breakup in your uh, presentation, and if I remember, it was around five hundred seven hundred crore order book. uh what is the current uh, breakup of residential and government residential private i mean i think government is only the project which is now on slow moving there is pvd rest of the private residential i think that we don't have any project as of now but uh, let me check it is still uh, given we have a bifurcation of uh, uh, government residential project uh, then a private residential project Can you go back to your presentation and confirm because I am not sure about the exact okay. percentage. Okay, so I'll cross check. But sir, uh, uh, what is the guidance here? Because uh, uh, I mean, private residential sector. You uh, few quarters back, you said that you were uh, positively looking into all these segments, and you were very. Uh, uh, No, very uh, positive on the real estate side. I think I, I think there is some misunderstanding. I have never committed that we are going to share private residential sector. I always go by the project in the project uh, value, and usually as far as developing business is concerned, we are too much cautious, and we usually bid for the projects for which the company's credentials are good. So as such, we have not uh, never expected so many orders from private home, a uh, private residential. So only three or four developers have come there as far as I am aware. So I think that one large developer has already given an order which we already declared, which is about two hundred fifty crore, and the private residential, which is going on now, which we have just started before fifteen days. <coughs> so and we have around six hundred and ninety-four crore uh, on our residential project, yeah. uh, private residential. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's on page number seventeen of the our presentation. Yes, yes, I'm just checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that. Yeah, I think I think Adani 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 real estate is considered as private residential. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Opportunity. Thank you very much. 
We take the next question from the line of Mr. Mihi from HNI Finance Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My first question is uh, regarding your receivable days, like for the full, uh, quarter one, FY23. Uh, something with the previous orders. And uh, another question. Uh, Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, your voice is not very clear. Your first question that we have not heard properly. Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, first question is regarding your receivable days. That your receivable days increase in comparison to previous quarters. And the second question is, uh, I believe that your accounting is done based on the completion work basis. Like, uh, I, I may be wrong. This is a question. Like, how your March accounting is always different than your uh, other quarters? Like, you always. Report aggressive revenue during the March quarter, but somehow your first quarter is generally low. So, can you just uh, give me a light on this? So it is not uh, uh, based on accounting. Uh, quarterly accounting is made or different. The thing is, like uh, the uh, industry is seasonal. This always third quarter is good. If you look at the uh, uh, environmental seasonal effect. Yes, for a construction period, concern first quarter falls in, uh, uh, in the month of April, May, and June, when they, uh, just after Holi, there is a crisis of people. In April, May, they say more uh, more a season of marriage for the uh, labor class people. At the same time, we have in uh, in those period there is a less availability of people, so the quarter is little bit big. And before the uh, second quarter, again it's monsoon and those types of uh, major holidays. So just after the second quarter till the uh, last quarter of the year, there's the fifth, the there's the full season where the consultant can be spent for all well. So mostly the last quarter is better compared to the first quarter of the each year. <clears throat> Okay, understood. And uh, one more last question is uh, regarding your uh, project in the industrial sector. So whether you are uh, exploring more on the industrial side or you are uh, just, as you mentioned, that you are not as much as bullish on your retail side or uh, residential side, and you are just uh, dealing with some uh, prime uh, clients only like Adani or DLS. So whether you are exploring any particular industry uh, for the your business purpose or uh, you are continuing with, with your uh, uh, already with your client who are like Zydas or something else? No, no, see, it is again about what the opportunity. We work in corporate, we work with large developers, whether it is residential or large projects on the government side. So it may be more about any building where we have done a project, and at the same time, what level of competition it is and what level of payment facilities are available in that uh, organization. So we build by that only. So it's not something like that we are bullish on any of the field. So uh, anything related to building, we work for all, all types of building. But the, you know, we just need to check what the prices which we are getting and what level of competition it is. Oh, understood. That's it for from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. <laughs> We take the next question from the line of Aditya Mehta from GK Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, sir, out mm -hmm. of our total order book of 4,600 crore, how much are we planning to execute in this financial year? So, we have given a projection of 2,200 crore which we are planning to complete in this year. So that will be approximately 25% growth over last year. Yeah. So, but we, if we look at our Q1 quarter, the quarter-on-quarter growth, quarter growth is very low. So what might be the possible reason for that? So this time there was a huge marriage season between the labels because last two years, March 20 and March 21, was the corona period where they were not able to arrange any marriage. So there was, there was a huge season of marriage. And in Gujarat, there was a big strike of uh, aggregate, uh, uh, aggregate materials. So both the things were affected on the first quarter. But in general, also, if you see quarter to quarter every year on the first quarter, it is, they are always much weaker than the previous quarter or the last quarter of each year. Okay, sir. 
Okay, sir. Thank you. That is from my side. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Agam Shah. From, he is an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, sir. Congrats on good, uh, good set of numbers. Sir, quick question uh, on the order book. You said uh, the pipeline for this year is what, 2200 crores? Or that much order you will be getting yeah. this year? How do you look at yeah, it? Yeah, minimum, minimum that is the threshold which I keep it in my mind. And uh, we can go beyond that also, depending on the opportunity to get and still the amendments to go. So let us say for the better us. So broadly, 2000 crore is what an incremental order you will be adding this year. Is what I look at. Yeah, minimum, that's the minimum pressure we can see. Okay, and anywhere you have your L1 bidder or the any which can be the highest for this year? Any color on that? Presently, I cannot predict on that, but. Uh, the L1 one, that's once the one tender where we were, L1 was a medical college and hospital for this time, sorry. The tender has already been rejected and the government has already uh, issued the new tender, so we did it the second time also, but the second time we couldn't get the uh, opportunity. So, the rest of the things are. It's not easy to predict as the L1 today, but yeah, there are some of the others in the range of 300, 300 crore, which are almost uh, the verge of con uh, conclusion, which we are expecting to close by this one. And uh, on, the Mar on the Maharashtra project, the Wonder project, mm -hmm. so do we expect the work to get started in next quarter since with the change in the government? Uh, probably because if it is not in this next quarter, at least I should say minimum by third quarter something should be issued on positive. And we can expect the entire order to be executed now with the change in the government or still no clarity? Uh, probably if the, work is, if the work is again allotted to us and it goes on, I think it will be much higher rather than what we have uh, got and what we are uh, executing. So it will be on a very higher value. <clears throat> so, and if it, if it all doesn't come through, any hit will have to mm. take, or that has already been taken care of. I think that has been already, already been taken care of. Whatever expenses were there, we have only been paying last financial year. Okay, okay, that's it from us. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Shravan Shah from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, sir, just uh, again uh, uh, trying to uh, understand on the, on the revenue uh, front particularly. So, uh, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, sir, 2,200 crore revenue that we are looking for FY23. So, in the next mm -hmm. nine months, uh, we need to do a 30% uh, uh, growth. Uh, so yeah. we are confident that uh, we can we can do with the existing order book. Yeah, yeah, of course we can do without any fail. The only reason for that was like I explained that is the absolute need because of the marriage season and the issues related to sites of aggregate supplies, quarry supplies in the ground. Okay, okay, and 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 also you mentioned the uh, uh, L1 uh, Gujarat Mausari Medical College 615 crore. That got cancelled and uh, rebated, but we did not uh, uh, got that project. Uh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, in, in in terms of the 4,000 crore big pipeline that you mentioned, if you can uh, uh, give the uh, value of the projects, a couple of projects out of that, then it would be helpful. So as I told you, German Jewelry Park, which we have built at with Mumbai, is about 1,000 crores. There is a museum at Varna, that is about 100 crores. There is a big uh, 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 Sorry, sir. I, I, uh, so, uh, if you can uh, slow it, uh, then it will be uh, better. So German Jewelry Park in Maharashtra is 1,000 crores. Okay. Then museum in Vatnagar is about 100 crores. Then Tikkaat, that order from Ireland is about 200 crores. Then 400 crores. 200 crores. Okay, 200 crores. Phase 2 needle factory at uh, Gujarat is 100 crores. Okay. And, and uh, uh, even the... 
and then DLF for uh, residential also thousand crore uh, is is so is part of. Minimum municipal Surat Municipal Corporation Tower uh, Tower uh, uh, Corporation building it is one thousand crore. So the major is then is whether one thousand municipal Surat Corporation one one thousand crore DLF residential one thousand crore. The rest of the projects are between hundred to two hundred crore, and one Indian Navy project in Karnataka is about it. कर्नाटक इज एट हंड्रेड करोड़ या इंडियन मेरी प्रोजेक्ट ओके सो सो मोस्ट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलरली दिस डी एल एफ वन विच इज अ प्राइवेट वन सो एंड द रेस्ट इज सीम्स लाइक अ मोस्ट ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट वन सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ द फाइनलाइजेशन सो वेर वेन कैन वी सी द फाइनल आउटकम सो एंड होप दैट वी शुड बी गेटिंग एटलीस्ट one or two larger projects are which is which is must needed i think uh, about 300 or 400 crore crores of water and discussing at the last stage so probably that i expect we should conclude by end of august and uh, rest of the projects are rest of the time tenders are still in the at the bid stage so probably that can go beyond uh, in the month of september okay 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 uh yeah uh that's it uh, uh, from my side uh, uh, thank uh operator thank you sir we take the next question from the line of mr janam shah from equity securities please go ahead sir mr janam your line is in talk mode sir please go ahead with your question yeah thank you for the opportunity uh it's related to i am uh, i am in the project so uh, what is the outstanding order book as on june and uh, uh, when is expecting to complete the state project you are talking about i am in the bad yes i am in the bad at the, the uh, campus which is in the new campus which is almost completed in the end of it so that which we started uh, just before the diwali That was in the old campus. That will be expecting by complete by March 23. Okay, okay. So then, sir, about uh, the UP medical project. So we have executed around 34 crores of work during this particular quarter. Uh, though all over uh, overall revenue was uh, 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 subdued during this particular quarter across the projects. Uh, however, the timeline for the projects was around 18 months or so. So how we are going ahead with that project in terms of execution for so these, these projects were these projects were given mostly at the time of corona and in the, the corona period already there some of the projects were extended to the part of six months so most of the projects in the now extended timeline is march 23 and some of the projects like sun but then question are where the space for medical hospital was given just before two months that they were that go in the month of july project <clears throat> Okay, so significant execution is expected post this monsoon season. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Uttam Shreemal from Axis Securities Limited. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, thanks, sir. Uh, thanks, sir, for giving the opportunity. Uh, my question is to uh, Mr. Hedder, madam. Uh, madam, uh, in, our interest cost has gone down this uh, quarter. So this is sustainable amount, or uh, it's an increase going forward. Sorry, I did not get your question. It's the same thing. Yes, interest cost has uh, come down this quarter uh, compared to last quarter, uh, quarter four FY twenty two. So uh, this is sustainable amount, or it's an increase going forward. Yeah, this will remain going forward because uh, if you see compared to uh, earlier quarter, uh, uh, the utilization of funds is not as high. Okay, so uh, so um, uh, sustainable loan rate will be around seventy seventy five crores, seventy crores, seven crores to seven eight crores. It will be better, yeah. It will be around seventy to uh, yeah sixty five to seventy crores. Okay, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. That's all for my side. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for the day. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shravan for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. uh uh thank you sir for giving us the opportunity to host the call 
and thank you for uh, all the participants uh, sir do you have any closing comments yes uh, once again thank you everyone for joining us and your your continuous support and trust on us we hope that we have been able to address most of your queries in case of any further queries or clarifications you may reach to our investor relation advisory and that and they will connect with you offline thank you the participants and moderators for hosting our call thank you the sarvan again uh thank you sir thank you sir thank you on behalf of dollar capital that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines